Hello and welcome to another episode of the Highwood Health Show. This week we've got a phenomenal episode for you, but last week's episode, episode number 10, featured Dr. Jamie Seaman. If you haven't listened to it, if you're a woman or you know of a woman who has struggled to regain her health after pregnancy, believe me, you do not want to miss this episode. Remember, that's episode 10. But this week, if last week was all about moms regaining their health, this week is about dads doing the same. We've got Michael Ashford, who's the founder of Fit Dad Fitness, and he'll share with us why, from his point of view, it is so important for dads to take care of themselves and to give that example to their children. This is going to be a phenomenal conversation and I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it. And I would also like to take advantage of this opportunity to remind you about our free Facebook group. All you need to do is go to dre.show, that's dre.show forward slash group, and you can join the group for free. You don't need to enter an email or do anything like that. And it allows me to interact more with you, to answer your questions, to address more specific concerns, to get ideas for new guests, for new shows, for Q's and A's. It's a great place. We've had some great interactions so far, and I really look forward to seeing all of you there. So without further ado, welcome to episode 11. And remember, you are on the highway to health and I'm your guide to help you get there. Are you ready to live ageless? Want to discover alternative health choices, cutting edge nutrition and fitness for the entire family? Welcome to Highway to Health Show with your host, Dr. E, the stem cell guy, where Dr. E helps you live ageless. And now here's your host, Dr. E. Welcome to another episode of the Highwood Health Show. I'm your host, Dr. E, the stem cell guy. Joining me today is Michael Ashford. He's founder of Fit That Fitness. He's a certified personal trainer who embarked on a fitness-centered, health-conscious lifestyle in order to be able to live and enjoy life to the fullest, but also to motivate his children to do the same. The result of this change led him to start Fit Dad Fitness, where he coaches other dads to do the same. And today he's going to talk to us about the importance of nutrition, exercise, and a lot of other things. Plus, he's going to give you all the practical tips and advice to get started in your health journey today. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I saw your um, couple of articles in Men's Health and Lift Magazine really focusing on your health, your transformation, you were kind of like the opposite side. Most people who suddenly decide to transform their lives is because they see a photo of themselves and they're like super overweight, but that really wasn't your case. As a matter of fact, both of these articles, they describe you saying that you got sick and tired of being the skinny guy. Yeah. (laughs) So why don't you tell us a little bit about this? Well, and one thing that I always try to make clear is being skinny doesn't necessarily mean you're healthy. And that really was the impetus towards me making a change with my health and fitness was, yes, I saw a picture and at first I didn't like the way that I look. And I had always been the skinny guy, the long distance endurance runner's body type of guy. But when I saw that picture, there was a deeper meaning to it or a deeper level of understanding that I'm not doing everything that I can do as a husband, as a father, as just a man to make sure that I am treating my body like the vessel that it is that's going to carry me through this life. I understood in seeing that moment and seeing that picture that my health was not where it could and should be. And so that was really at the core of it, the impetus to change. Yes, the physical transformation has been awesome and I love it. I love having muscles for sure, but it really was about, I want to feel better and I want to set myself up for as much as I possibly can affect a lifetime of longevity and health. Perfect. Yeah, it's so profound what you're saying. And it is more about realizing that this body is the only one we have. Yeah. And it's just about really optimizing it and making sure that we're doing the best we can for it, really. I mean, we do the best that we can with what we have. But most of the time, it's just neglect, really, that's driving us to where we currently are. So that's really admirable that you recognize and you understood this and that you were able to really start addressing it because most people recognize this too late in the game. And they're like, oh, well, now I have this problem. Now I have this other health issue. And they recognize it that late. But going back, you were not even a personal trainer at the time, right? No, I was not. No, that was several years down the road into this fit, quote unquote, fitness journey. (laughs) Wow. So that actually jump-started that idea as well. It did. I found that once somebody starts 
getting healthier, eating healthier, and they not only see the changes in their body physically, but more about how they feel and the other aspects of their lives that health and fitness and living that lifestyle bring to your life, the better mood, the increased energy, the better confidence or increased confidence, just all the other areas that living a healthier, more active lifestyle brings to you, you want that for other people. That transformation mentally and emotionally is so much more, I'll say pleasing than even the physical transformation could ever be because how you feel deep down inside, you want that for other people, especially the people that you care about or the causes or issues that you care about. I happen to really focus a lot of my time on helping fathers live that healthy, active, involved life with their children using fitness as that foundation. Because I think it can help the relationship between fathers and children, not necessarily that at the end of the day, it's about how the father looks. There are plenty of great dads who are carrying an extra 50 pounds of weight, but it's more about setting them up for the ability to do what they want to do with their body, that their body is not physically holding them back from any experience that they may have with their children or with their family well into the future. And so for me, I said, the best way that I know how <laughs> is to become a personal trainer so that I can have some credibility to this, that I just wasn't some bro in the gym who changed his body and now I'm going to tell you what to do. But I wanted to bring some real research, some real science behind it, make sure that everything that I was saying was backed up and true and digestible for people, I think, at the end of the day. So yeah, you get this fitness bug, this health bug, and you want to share it with other people. And that really was a lot of the motivation between becoming a certified personal trainer too. A lot of these titles, and I don't know if you feel the same, a lot of these titles are many times just thrown out very easily. In my particular case, for instance, as a physician, as a traditionally trained MD, back at home in Mexico, I realized that the only way to be a doctor is you were an MD. Everybody else weren't doctors. I mean, sometimes we'd call dentists doctors, but that was just more out of respect. And then you come to a country like the US where you have all these different professions that are also doctors, chiropractors, you have the naturopaths, you have all these different things. So it becomes a little bit confusing. Now, in a different side, in terms of personal training, do you see, because I've noticed this, especially now with the influx and the growth of social media, that Everyone and anyone who just goes to the gym for a little bit, they're suddenly personal trainers or fitness coaches. Do you see this happening a lot? I do. And I'm not going to sit here and say that I went through some rigorous training either. You know, you can become a certified personal trainer online and it is truly that easy. And that's the process I went through. The thing that I wanted to make sure that I did was actually train people in person as well, because there's a huge difference in knowing how your body moves and trying to apply that to somebody else if you can't physically see them in person. So I've trained people in person to make sure that I got that level of experience as well after I got my certification, but I was definitely not going to call myself a certified personal trainer up until the point where I got at least some sort of a document telling me that I had gone through a level of education. I do try to keep up with that, and I do. I keep that current. I keep that relevant. I take continuing education courses. I never want to steer people wrong based on what had worked for me. What works for me doesn't necessarily work for everybody. And it is, it is very easy for somebody to jump on Instagram, build up a following, and then start selling training plans. You see it all the time. And I think a lot of people get burned by that. Even just recently, there was a very large Instagram quote unquote influencer who got burned because she promised her clients custom workout plans and she was just copying and pasting their workout plans and she got sued. Many, many people got really mad about that. Well, of course, because when you look at it in that particular way, nobody would think of doing that in like a storefront. And then suddenly you start doing it online, but it's still straight up fraud. Yeah. <laughs> in the end, what I was trying to ask previously is that it's not just about knowing how your body works, but really getting that background. And it doesn't really matter, at least from my point of view, 
if you went to school or if you got your training online or if you got your training in person from watching somebody else or if you got your training from several years of actually seeing these different things from kind of a distance. But the truth of the matter, what's really, really important is that you actually had, because somebody had to put together yeah. this training, this certification course that you went through in order to teach you these things and you had to take certain examinations. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I'm trying to say because I always tell my patients that health is really, really simple. The problem is that in order for many of these different businesses to be able to stake their claim of the big health pie, they need to make it sound complicated. They need to make it sound super hard, super difficult, super complex, so that you need to get my product in order to do this. You need to do it this way in order to do that. Or the other end is that we've grown to expect this super easy to obtain, no effort necessary results. Like, oh, just drink this tea and <laughs> yeah. just do this and keep watching Netflix and you'll be fine, right? Yeah. So all those things happen. And that's why I'm in a mission to seek out people like yourself and bring them here. And before we start really dishing out all this great advice that I'm sure you have for our listeners, I wanted to make sure that you were able to come here and say like, listen, okay, I'm not just your Instagram fit that. Because Michael on Instagram, you'll see that he really is fit. <laughs> but that's really not the only reason. There's a lot of people who can be fit and not really have the ability or the expertise or the knowledge to train and to translate that information to somebody else. So that's really what I wanted to get to here and show everyone. Yeah, I appreciate that. On the contrary, I appreciate you being able to come here and share this with us. Now, most of the time, and we were sharing this before we started our conversation, most of the people who listen to my show really are probably most geared towards moms. But number one, most of the things that you will share with us apply to both moms and dads. It's nutrition, it's lifestyle, it's fitness. And second of all, it's really moms that a lot of the times will motivate dads to go to the gym, correct? Is that accurate in your experience? Yeah, 100%. That absolutely can happen. And you're absolutely right. Anything that I tell you right now through the rest of our conversation, it's not a, well, this works for men and this works for women. It is a, this is how you live a fit and healthy lifestyle. And these are the tenets that I believe and that are scientifically proven to get you into a better spot health-wise. So there's no need for the distinctions that I think are made in the health and fitness community between men and women sometimes. Exactly, exactly. Now, in your particular case, though, I am curious, what made you say, you know what, I want to help dads. This is what I see as my path. Well, first off, the thing that motivated me to start living a more healthy, active, fit lifestyle was the picture that I saw that we were referencing earlier was a picture of me holding my son's hand. And that struck to me at my core as a father. And I wanted to make sure that I was setting myself up to be there for him and eventually my daughter when she came along to be there for them as for as long as I possibly could affect. Understanding that things can happen out of my control, but I can affect a lot of things. I can increase the longevity. I can increase the quality of my life and the experiences I have with my kids if I pay attention to these things. The other piece of it is, and it's not quite so uplifting or positive, is previously to our daughter being born, my wife worked as a, my wife stays home now, and she also is a certified personal trainer. She worked as an advocate for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. And so I saw, well, I didn't see, I heard some of the horrific things that men who claim to love others can do and the damage that they can inflict. And oftentimes it was fathers and husbands. More often than not, it is. Domestic violence and sexual assault is largely a men's issue. It is an issue that men need to address and wipe out. As a father myself and hearing the stories of what these fathers perpetrated on their wives and their children, I felt helpless in what I could do about it. And so I was looking for some way to get ahead of the issue. And for me, the issue is families need involved fathers. They need involved, present, active fathers. And studies show kids that grow up in a home with both parents there, they are less prone to be obese. They are less prone to suffer from depression or anxiety. They get better grades. They have better earning potential as adults and young professionals. Just these things that happen when the father is present in the home, they're at the core of why I wanted to do this. And I thought, 
I love fitness so much and what it has brought to me. And I want to help families stay together. Why not use fitness as the foundation to encourage and equip fathers to live an active, involved, healthy life with their children? And healthy is across the board. It's not just physically. Sorry for the long-winded answer, but there's a deep, deep meaning to it. (laughs) That was great. And I actually think that gives it so much weight to your mission and to why you're doing it. And I really admire you not only noticing this and recognizing this, but suddenly deciding to do something about it. And if you want to look at it from, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, but if you wanted to look at this from a physiological perspective, perspective, really what's happening in the heads of all these fathers that you're talking about, who are the perpetrators of domestic abuse, in their brains, there's certain chemicals that aren't firing off in the right manner, certain cells, certain neurotransmitters that are just not interacting in the correct way. And again, the research has proven time and again that adequate nutrition and a healthy lifestyle will help you with a lot of these different mental disorders and mental issues. I'm not saying that it's just going to completely make somebody who's a total jerk become nice and mellow, but the research in brain science is inequivocal. I mean, exercise and adequate nutrition are so important. So I'm really, really happy to have someone like yourself who decided to take that challenge head on and doing the best you can to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Trying. (laughs) We can help you continue growing this. Speaking of which, I know that you have a rather large and ever growing community online of men that you're currently helping, correct? Yeah, I do. And it's a lot of fun. I definitely have niched myself by catering specifically to fathers, and I'm okay with that. I probably will never get to, you know, even a hundred thousand followers, for instance, on Instagram. That's not what it's about. I want to that select group where my message resonates. Those men, those fathers are motivated to do something with their health and fitness for the betterment of themselves and their families. Man, if I can reach 10 people, that makes it a success. But yeah, it's definitely grown over the last several years. It's really taken off as I've started my podcast, the Fit Dad Fitness Podcast. I used to be a journalist, and so I love just asking questions. It's always interesting for me to be on other people's podcasts and be the one answering the questions. (laughs) So that's helped. And then I offer resources on my site, fitdadfitness.com, whether it's the free workout guides that I put together or the membership site that I put together where guys can sign up for five bucks a month and just follow my personal daily workouts six days a week and get a recipe of the week as well. I want to make fitness accessible to guys. I don't want it to be something that is too much of a cost burden for them to bear and that be the hurdle that they can't get over. I think that's super important. And that's something that we like to emphasize a lot here. The entry bar to most of these things, it has got to be accessible and it should be accessible because really most of these things, a couple of weeks ago, we spoke to Jay Cole, who is a meditation expert, and he said the same thing. He said, listen, the most important thing is just to get started. Yeah. And in order to get started, all you need is just to sit down straight and relax and calm down and you need one minute. You don't need absolute silence. You don't need a meditation pillow. You don't need a special room. You just need to get started. Same thing I'm guessing here. So to have an online resource like this for the cost of a latte at Starbucks (laughs) is phenomenal. What else do people find in your site? That part of the site is a membership site. It's called the Daily Fit Dad. And like I said, it's just my personal daily workouts that you get access to every day. Plus, like I said, a recipe of the week. So I love to cook. So I share recipes that I find, or they're my own personal recipes that I share with the members in that Daily Fit Dad community. But that's the only part, I guess, that is really the paid aspect, except for my one-on-one coaching clients. But like I said, I've got free workout guides there. I've got ebooks. I've got 14 rules for fit dads. It's an ebook on there that just kind of go through the very simple things you can do or that you should do if you want to live that active, involved, healthy life as a fit dad to get started. I feature a dad every month as the featured fit dad of the month and really just try to promote, again, the average guys who are out there who are working a job, who have their kids, who have their families, who are also paying attention to their health and fitness and understand how important that is. I have blogs. I mean, just again, as much as I can give away to equip people with good information to get started and make a difference, I'm all about that. That's really fun for me. (laughs) Thank you so much for doing that. As someone who's been doing all these things, and this just popped into my head, as someone who's been doing all these things for so long, and I'm sure you're not the only one who's putting out great information out there for free, what do you think is holding most of these potentially fit dads 
back from really saying, you know what, this is what I need to get started. What do you think is missing? What do they need to have click in their heads in order to say, oh, yes, this is something that. Well, it's something that I call the dad's noble cause. And on the surface, it sounds great. And for the female listeners, too, this may be totally relevant to the mom as well. It kind of goes something like this. I am so busy at work trying to provide for my family, and I've got to take the kids to practice, and maybe the dad is the cook or the mom is the cook, and I've got to cook dinner, and I've got to keep a clean house, and on and on and on and on down the line. I'm so busy taking care of my family's needs that I just don't have the time to take care of myself. I can't fit this in. And on the surface, like I said, I call it the dad's noble cause because it sounds right. And at first you agree with it. You say, oh, well, yeah, why would you ever not want to do those things? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Take care of your family. Look at that guy. He's working so hard to take care of his family. He's sacrificing himself. And I don't buy into that, (laughs) quite honestly. And this is not a no excuses kind of bro, you know, session right now. This is a for the things that you care most about. You have to take care of yourself first before you can give 100% of yourself to those other things. And the analogy that's always used is when you're flying in an airplane and they say, hey, if the oxygen masks drop, what do they tell you to do? Fix yourself first before you start trying to help others. And it's the same thing in health and fitness. And it doesn't take a ton of work. It's very simple. Fix yourself first get yourself in the right place mentally, physically, emotionally, so that you can give 100% of yourself to the people that are depending on you the most. I don't subscribe to this idea that you don't have time. Most people have time. You need to audit your day. You need to audit your sleep schedule. You need to audit the things that you are filling your time with, your downtime with, and understand that, hey, if it's not a priority, then it's not a priority. But if it is something that you wish could be a priority, you can find the time. I guarantee it because I did it. I went through the exact same thing. I know a ton of other guys that did. It is possible. Exactly. Yeah. It's not that you don't have time. It's not a priority. And when you talk to yourself like that, and when you say, you know what, I'm not doing this because it's not important enough for me, that's when things really start clicking. I was talking again with Josh McLean and he's an author and he was here a couple of episodes ago. And one of these typical things that suddenly tragedy struck in his life and made him realize that he was not prioritizing adequately. So I think this is just the same. It's a matter of sitting down and saying, you know what, what is important for me? And the second thing that I wanted to really recognize here is that if you're doing that, then you're leading by example. A hundred percent. Because kids, you can tell them whatever you want, but from an evolution standpoint, monkey see, monkey does. It's not monkey here, monkey does. It's monkey see, monkey does. And it's crazy. Right now, we have a toddler. We have a one and a half year old walking around. It is crazy how he will walk in and he'll see you and then he'll start imitating Mm -hmm. those things. He would walk in on the bathroom while my wife was putting on her makeup and he would start doing that. Uh And (laughs) he saw me shaving the other day and he started doing that. He sees me do my hair and he starts doing that. We put cream on and he does that. So if your kids are seeing, it's going to be a lot more effective If your kids see you leading a healthy lifestyle, going to the gym every day because you want to, not because you have to, but because it is important, it's going to be so much easier for them to say, oh yeah, that's That's normal. Exactly. That's standard, right? Let me give you two perfect examples of this. My wife and I have never pushed health, pushed fitness, pushed exercise on our children. We've encouraged them to play sports, of course, but actually paying attention to exercise as kids, like as an eight and a six-year-old, why would you do that? But we set that example. And so one of the things that happens all the time in my house is our kids will get out their little weight sets. Uh, We've got little like dumbbells and a yoga mat and these cones, and they'll set up weight stations around the house. And they'll be doing deadlifts and curls and overhead presses kind of as a circuit around the house just for fun. Like that's their idea of play. And then most recently, I love obstacle course races. So I like doing Spartan races and warrior dashes. And I'm doing another one this July, close to my birthday. And I was talking about it. And my son comes up and he's like, Dad, do they let kids do those too? And I said, well, absolutely they do. They have kids races. They have a little one mile kids race. He's like, can I do that with you? 
Absolutely. Like how in the world would I ever tell my son no? They talk about all the time. They talk about how they, they want to have a sugar-free day. You know, my wife and I talk about this. We don't want to have sugar today. Oh, that item has a lot of sugar, so I'm not going to have very much of it because we understand the effect that sugar can have on our bodies. And we talk to our kids about these things. So my kids will come up to me someday at random times or on different weeks and say, I want this to be a sugar-free day, dad. Can you help me? And it's just, we've never pushed that. Proud that moment, huh? A hundred percent. It is so thrilling because to your point, we are trying to set that example and show them what to do rather than just tell them, hey, this is important. Exactly. Because you can tell them what they should be doing until you're you know, blue in the face. But probably going to do the opposite, <laughs> especially if you're doing the opposite. Yeah. Because if you're going out there and eating crap, but you're forcing the healthy food on them, they're going to go like, well, why do I have to suffer when you seem to be having such a great time? And they don't really understand what's the difference. So it's really good that we're identifying that. And I think that for a lot of dads and a lot of moms, that is motivation enough. I know for sure that my wife is really enjoying it now. The gym that we just joined has got daycare. So it's a great place for her to go every day. So she goes every day. She takes a little one. He stays there. But the funny thing is, and she was telling me yesterday, is that as they start walking out the gym, he sees other people like do squats and do stuff. And they stop and do a couple of squats, push-ups and something like that. So he's seeing these as normal. He's probably just waiting to be old enough to do them on his own, which is a really great example to set for them. So Michael, before we wrap this up, we normally like to give people who listen to our show three or four maybe even two things that they can start doing today to move in the right direction in this particular case of a more active lifestyle. What would be your top two or three recommendations? I've really been kind of banging this drum here recently. It is not as nearly as complicated as people make it out to be when you talk about living a healthy and fit lifestyle. And for me, it comes down to these three things. The first is lift weights, get stronger, men and women get in the gym and resistance train. Now, if you like cardio, if you like going and doing a hit class or a cardio class or getting on the treadmill, that's fine. But incorporate weight training into your routine. It is vitally important. Strong bones, increased metabolism, so you have the ability to be a little bit more flexible in your diet, perhaps. There is just so much value gained from weight training and resistance training. Not to mention increased libido, right? Increased libido across the board, man. You're absolutely right. The value that you get out of weight training is just exponential. Now, if somebody doesn't have access to a gym and wants to get started, would you recommend body weight exercises like TRX? Yeah, resistance training can be your body and implements that you find around the house. You know, one of the things that I did this last year, each holiday, around Christmas time in between Thanksgiving and New Year's, I do a Fit Dad holiday shred. And this year was all body weight. And I told people, hey, for rows, for bent over rows, go and find a suitcase and maybe put some books in it and do some rows with that little suitcase that you might take on the airplane. You can find ways to incorporate resistance without having to go to the gym. Body weight is great. It's fantastic. Hey, incorporate your kids. Put your kids on your shoulder and do squats that way Uh, or have them get on your back and try to do some push-ups. You can find ways to use your body as the resistance. Absolutely. And one of the things I'm getting ready to release on my site is a total body weight workout plan, all body weight. You can do it from anywhere. You can do it from your hotel room, your office, your bedroom, wherever. Wow. That's great. And it's only going to cost people $5. No, that'll be free. That'll be zero dollars. Zero dollars. Wow. Perfect. And where can they go to get that one? It's not on the site yet, but it'll be up at fitdadfitness.com here in the next several weeks. Well, there you go. So guys, make sure that you go take a look at the site. Check all the free resources that Michael's got. There's several of them. Sign up for the newsletter so that you can be notified of all these different things. And I mean, there are so many options and it's so simple and it really cannot get any simpler than this. It's just a matter of deciding and wanting to start doing it. And just like with everything else, you can start with one push-up. You don't suddenly need to say, oh, I need to do 150 push No, start with one. Do one and then move on to two the next day and so on. What would be your other two tips? The other two, and I'll get to them real quick. The second one is eat real food. Stop eating stuff that is in a box or in a can. Eat food that is as close to its natural state as possible. Lean meats, fresh fruits and vegetables, whole complex carbs like oats and brown rice and cruciferous vegetables. 
eat real food, all right? And get away from the overprocessed, hyper palatable food that is making us obese as a species. So eat real food. The third and what I think is the most important one out of all of these is stop thinking about how you want to look and start thinking about how you want to feel. A long, healthy, fit, active lifestyle is not about achieving a certain body type. It is about living life the way it was meant to be lived. And that is to feel good. It shouldn't hurt to move. It should not hurt to walk downstairs. It should not hurt to pick up your child. Think about how you want to feel. Stop comparing your body type to anybody else's, to mine or yours or the next Instagram guy that shows up on your feed. Think about how you want to feel today, next month, 50 years from now. Think about how you want to feel when you walk your daughter down the aisle. Think about how you want to feel when you hold your grandkid in your arms. And do you feel stable and secure and sound? Or do you feel unstable? Do you feel like you need help or assistance? I never want to get to that point. And so that is my motivation. And as much as I can tell anybody else, I want that to be your motivation as well. Perfect. Those are great pieces of advice. And finally, where can people find out more about you other than your website? Yeah. So I mentioned the website. The Fit Dad Fitness Podcast as well is all over. Anywhere you can find podcasts, go listen to the Fit Dad Fitness Podcast. And then I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Fit Dad Fitness and on Facebook at Fit Dad Fitness page. There you have it, everyone. I'm going to make sure to link to everything that Michael has shared with us today in our episode show notes. Make sure you go over there. Remember, you can always go to dre.show. That's dre.show. And that'll give you the listing of all the episodes that we've done. You can go into each episode specific show notes. We will be sharing in social media the specific link, the direct link to everything to this particular episode and everything that Michael has shared with us. If you have any questions, make sure to send them our way. Remember, dre.show forward slash ask. And you can ask me your question. If it has to do with Michael, I'll make sure to send it his way. And hopefully we'll be able to have him back in a few months to do a recap and maybe answer some of your questions. In the meantime, go listen to this podcast. Go subscribe, follow him on social media, and let him know that you heard him over here. Once again, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the Highwood Health Show. I'm your host, Dr. E, the stem cell guy. Hear from you. Go to dre.show. Again, that's Dr. E dot show. Until next time, this is Dr. E's Highway to Health, helping you live ageless.